Hi, today we're going to start a series of episodes about DC motors. Let's start. What is a DC motor and why we use DC motors? Uh, DC motors have a disadvantage uh, from an AC motor that the AC motor must uh, by electromagnetic field must charge or create some uh, current in the uh, winding in the rotor so the mo the rotor must have a, a own uh, the rotated uh, magnetic field and then the motor uh, can uh, um, the rotor can rotate the advantage about DC motor is that we have already uh, magnets in the motor. So we don't have to uh, create the magnetic field because the field already exists there. So how the motor looks like. So if this is the, the motor case, we have the uh, magnets. And this will be south polarity magnet. And this will be the north. Inside we have the rotor. On the rotor, this is a shaft. And we have some windings. And the windings are connected with the commutator. Commutator does the ends of the windings uh, of course there will be more uh, ends on the commutator and that's going to be more windings in the motors but on the commutator uh, we can transfer by brushes the voltage and the voltage will create the electromagnetic field <coughs> and this side of the rotor will have the south a polarity and this will be north polarity of course the same poles attract to each other and the opposite uh, poles they repel each other the commutator are moved uh, for with some angle so in when in this position uh, the poles are attract to each other the rotor is start to spin and then the polarity will change and now we will have a south pole and on this side we will have a north pole and now the poles will repel each other and again when the <coughs> rotor will rotate uh, and the rotor will move on a different magnet the commutator will change the poles again and then uh, the poles will attract each other again and this will happen over and over so the rotor can rotate and we can have uh, a torque we can have two different types of the motors uh, that can be with the magnets on the stator as in this case and we also can have uh, magnets on the rotor then the windings are on the stator we also have uh, brushless motors. In the brush motor, uh, brushless motors, we don't have a commutator and brushes, uh, but the for for change of voltage, we have to use a controller. The controller will recognize uh, what is the position of the rotor, and we put a, a correct voltage on correct uh, winding. Uh, just to spin the rotor so we can get uh, the torque on the shaft uh, the disadvantage of the brushless motors is that we need the actually controller some electronic circuits plus we need something to uh, give the, the, uh, the controller know where is the rotor what is the position of the motor so then we need to use a sensors and this is a hull sensor 
Uh, the HAL sensor can recognize a magnetic field, <clears throat> but also can uh, recognize the direction of the field. So these sensors must have a, a separate wires connected to the controller, so the controller can recognize what is the position of the uh, rotor and can control the voltage on the windings. There is a way to uh, have a brushless motors uh, without sensors because that's the types. We have a brush uh, motors, we have a brushless motors, uh, but, uh, but the brushless motors we can uh, have also with the sensors or sensorless. On the sensorless uh, motors, uh, the controller can check the voltage on the windings. If we're gonna uh, set the rotor, if we're gonna just turn the rotor, when the, for example, south pole on the rotor will be on the north uh, pole of the stator, we can read the, the voltage on the uh, winding and the right controller can recognize what is the position of the rotor and can give the right the correct voltage on the rotor. This is probably more complicated method uh, because the controller must be more complicated, but then we can eliminate the sensors problems. Uh, for example, uh, for any damage, mechanical damage or uh, any fa uh, failures. In next episode, I will talk uh, about every single DC motor, we're gonna talk about uh, steppers, about servo motors, uh, we're gonna talk about different types of motors, but this is the basic principle how the motor works, and we also find we will find that, uh, that some of the DC motors are not really DC motors uh, because we can. Mm, we will have uh, motors, one phase motors, two phase motors, or even three phase motors. And uh, DC motors, there is many different types of DC motors. And for example, three phase a DC motor, it, it not uses uh, the DC actually, uh, because we just put in the impulses on the windings, even here, uh, we cannot say this is a DC motor because the voltage uh, will change, uh, will uh, change the uh, from plus to minus, uh, and actually this is the uh, AC. But we're gonna talk about this more in next episode, and this only you know to uh, to let you know the the brushless motors we uh, call BLDC motors. And uh, DC motors, uh, the brushless motors, uh, are used uh, everywhere actually. Uh, we can find this in the computer fans. Uh, we can uh, find this in the robots in the factories. Uh, we also have uh, liner motors. Uh, we uh, have uh, two different types. That's a uh, rotation motors uh, and the liner motors. And we also have, for example, uh, the stepper motors when the precision is really high. And the, these motors can, uh, with high precision, control the CNC machines, for example. Uh, the servo motors, for example, uh, they can spin the rotor with high precision, but also can send the information back to PLC uh, where is actually uh, the rotor? What is the position of the uh, rotor? So the PLC uh, can correct the position uh, to what it needs. In some ap applications, this is very important. Uh, so this must be, uh, this is like a feedback uh, to the PLC, uh, what is the position of the shaft. Uh, today there was only introduction to the DC motors. Uh, from next episode, we're going to talk more about the individual devices. Thank you for today. See you in next episode. Bye.